Hello, everyone. My name is Claire Wiegand. I'm super excited to be presenting today a little bit about myself before we dive into lecture. So I grew up in Los Angeles and went to Harvard Westlake. I'm a rising junior at UC Berkeley pursuing a career in marketing and biotech. I recently obtained a certificate of entrepreneurship and technology from Berkeley, and I'm a 2020 Morris Wrigley Packathon winner. For the past two summers, I've been working at Amgen on the Enroll team as the marketing coordinator, and I'm currently working at a startup biotech company called Bright Cure. I'm doing UX design for them to create an application for their users and customers. And when I'm not working, I love cooking, scuba diving, and walking my dog, Kona. So here's a quick roadmap for how we will organize today's lecture. First, we will be talking about color and font psychology, go into a case study, explore dynamic content optimization, tips for self-branding, and finally, we will create a personal Google logo. So when you see this Vogue logo, what comes to mind? How does it make you feel? The wording of Vogue is written in serif. Serifs are the little accentuations on the letter that actually make the font easier to read in print. The serif font indicates tradition, establishment, and trustworthiness. And the background is pure white, which is associated with sincerity, pureness, and wellness. We see these logos everywhere, but you may not realize how purposeful each detail is to crafting their brand identity. One consideration when creating a logo is how the psychology of color may affect the customer. For example, red logos may be associated with excitefulness, youthfulness, and boldness. Orange logos can be associated with friendliness, cheerfulness, and confidence. A yellow logo could be associated with optimism, clarity, and warmth. Green logos may be associated with peace, growth, and health. Blue logos could be associated with trust, strength, and dependability. And finally, purple logos may be associated with creativity, imagination, and wisdom. Along with this, we have font psychology. So as I mentioned, serif, which is the Vogue logo, is associated with sophistication and tradition, whereas sans serif, which doesn't have the little accentuations on the letters, gives the logo a more modern, clean, and geometric look. Sans serif is thought to be more readable on a computer screen as well. Script typography will give your logo a more elegant, classic, and stylish look. And these are just a few examples. Both font psychology and color psychology are not only an integral part of logos, but in advertising and marketing in general. So what is marketing? Marketing encompasses the pricing, research, promotion, and distribution surrounding a product or service. But in simple terms, marketing can be defined as value creation and capture. This starts with knowing who your target market is, with the target market being a group of users with a need or desire. We can identify a target market by segmenting users into different groups based on their wants, expectations, behaviors, hopes, perceptions, and needs. The more specific segments we can create will enable us as marketers to provide the most relevant messaging. So at Amgen this summer, one of my main projects was using dynamic content optimization to create banner ads. So dynamic content optimization is basically just targeted advertisements with my target audience being healthcare providers. And with dynamic content optimization, we can choose different creative elements of a banner and then combine them to create personalized messages to cater to different viewers' preferences. The ads are placed in a digital asset repository 
assembled through data informed decision rules and personalized for the specified audience. In order to create those different segments, the first step one needs to do is conduct market research. So this means getting customer feedback by sending out surveys, doing research interviews, observation trials, and asking on social media. We can break this down into quantitative and qualitative research. Quantitative being what people do, being surveys, questionnaires, transaction data, behavioral tracking, and qualitative data being why people do it. Qualitative data includes interviews, focus groups, observations, social media, and customer feedback. By understanding how your product is perceived, you can better understand how to target your customers. So when I was doing this for Amgen, I examined my target market through geographic, demographic, psychographic, and behavioral data. With geographic data, I primarily looked at zip code. With demographic data, I looked at gender, education, and industry. With psychographic data, I looked at preferences. And with behavioral data, I looked at usage of different platforms and frequency to identify their channel preference. I also looked at decision drivers and barriers. With all of that information, you can create completely different advertisements to target each of the different segments. Platforms like Netflix use this same strategy to create different movie covers to entice specific segments to watch them. While targeting customers through data is incredibly useful in delivering relevant and helpful information, I also just want to add that knowing this info, you should be very cognizant of what ads you receive online because it's so tempting to online shop when you're constantly seeing ads curated for your individual preference. So now let's examine some commercials. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So what are your thoughts on these two commercials? Let's take a moment to reflect and then we can discuss. This is a famous marketing case study because it so clearly exemplifies the different ways a company can approach the same product, a computer. Microsoft took a very standard approach in that they're striving to convince the customer that they should buy this computer by highlighting it's excellent features. However, this commercial is not memorable and doesn't leave a lasting impression. On the other hand, Apple took an entirely different approach. In fact, a computer wasn't even shown. 
the Apple commercial is so powerful because it's thought provoking. And then after the commercial plays, you're still left reflecting on the powerful figures that flickered across the screen. The Apple commercial groups great thinkers with divergent thinking. And by buying an Apple product, you're linked with that same group of exceptional heroes depicted in the commercial. Apple doesn't even need to showcase their product because their brand awareness is so strong and the company has so much respect. With this case study, I wanted to bring to light how advertising isn't always as clear cut as identifying segments and showing them an ad. Especially today, we're so bombarded with advertisements on our devices, it's hard to stand out. Apple took a big risk with this commercial and it remains to be one of the most iconic commercials to date. So now I wanna go into some tips for self-branding. I wanna encourage everyone who hasn't already to create a LinkedIn profile to start building your professional brand. When companies or colleges search your name, your LinkedIn profile will pop up and you can leverage this to your advantage. One tactic I've employed is after each job or internship I did, I would ask my boss for a recommendation on LinkedIn. And when asking for a recommendation, it's usually a big deal. But the nice thing about recommendations on LinkedIn is they're only a few sentences long. So you're really not asking for a lot. When I look at someone's profile and they have a lot of recommendations, it brings them that immediate credibility. Connect with your friends and professors. You never know what type of connections someone may provide later down the line. It's definitely worth the time and energy investment to craft a thoughtful professional profile. And it'll be so much easier to add along the way if you start early. And along with this, I just wanna emphasize that your online presence is a reflection of your self brand. And that includes other social media platforms as well. Be so careful with what you post because job interviewers and teachers can see it. Also, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. It's just my name. Claire Weekend. I'd be so happy to answer any questions you may have about pursuing a career in marketing or Berkeley or any topics we discussed today. Thank you so much for your time and attention. With any remaining time I have, I want to show a quick video demonstration on how to create your own Google logo. And then I want you all to work on creating a Google logo that is representative of you as a person and think about what we discussed earlier in regards of thought choices and color in relation to the final, how the final project is perceived and how it represents you. Hi, I'm Olga. I'm a proud Latina Googler and I work in our computer science education department. In this activity, you will program and design a Google logo. Google often creates special logos called Google Doodles to celebrate holidays and important people, places, and events. There's a core team that creates Google Doodles. This team is a combination of artists and programmers called Doodlers. In this activity, you will be the artist and programmer for your own special logo. You might celebrate a real or imagined holiday like ice cream day or honor the life of a famous person. You could even highlight your favorite hobbies and interests like a sport or activity. As you create, you will learn about computer science concepts doodlers use every day, like events, sequencing, and loops. After watching this video, select and open the starter project linked on this page. This will open Scratch in a new tab. Scratch uses code blocks to give characters called sprites instructions, like when a key is pressed, change colors. This project has six sprites you can program. Each sprite has multiple costumes you can choose from to start your logo. After 
after opening your project, return to this tab to choose a video that interests you. Each video will show you a different way to design or program your logo. For example, you could use the Say Something video to create a logo about your favorite planet, favorite song, favorite animal, whatever you want. Watch as many videos as you like. While you work, you may want to pause a video to complete a step in your project. Arrange your windows to show scratch and a video at the same time. Also, please keep some ground rules in mind. While it is okay to use the Google logo for your project, it isn't okay to use it anyplace else or outside this activity. Please stay positive, friendly, and supportive towards others in the Scratch community. Keep Scratch a place where people of different backgrounds and interests feel welcome to hang out and create together. If you're new to programming, don't worry. There's no right or wrong way to create your logo. Tinker, experiment, and keep trying until you're proud of your logo. Now it's your turn. Select and open the starter project. Return to this tab and select a video below. Watch the video and complete the steps in your project. Then watch more videos to customize your logo. So the link to create your own Google logo will be sent out in the chat. And thank you so much for joining today's class. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you guys. Have a nice rest of your day.